This is not about finding alien spacecraft, but about delivering dominant intelligence across the tactical, operational, and strategic spectrum. But for us, it's about finding life and UFOs I, here at Fox 13. So <laughs> I'm, I'm just going to say, uh, we're starting the week off with a little bit more insight into UFO sightings after Congress held that you know public hearing last week on the topic. Yeah, and joining us now, the astrophysicist who joined us last week to talk about black holes. He was so fantastic. So great. So good. Uh, this morning, here's here he's here with his take on UFOs. Yeah, so Dr. Joe Pesch once again with the U.S. National Science Foundation. Doctor, good morning. Thanks for joining us. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. So I guess the big question is, from your professional perspective, is there life? out there and are they trying to get here <laughs> okay so so two parts to this uh i would be very surprised if there is not life out there and almost certainly there's going to be uh very simple life forms you know single celled things i think that's everywhere uh, the question is is there intelligence intelligent life out there and you know the i think the odds are a little bit less than the simple life but i would would be surprised if there aren't other uh, intelligent life forms around our galaxy and elsewhere. Okay, so you you have me on record saying that. I'd be very surprised <laughs> if, if that weren't the case. Okay. Uh, simple simple life everywhere, maybe less everywhere uh, intelligent life. Now, ha have they visited us? And I think that's a bigger question, a more difficult question. And I would in 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 my thoughts, I would say that that probably has not been the case. And why do I say this? I say this because, number one, distances between stars are enormous. And it's very difficult uh, to travel and communicate, right? Certainly we can't. Now, we're just starting out technologically, and I'm not arrogant uh, enough to think that, you know, there aren't many more advanced, more advanced uh, intelligent life forms out there. But the distances are great, and the laws of physics are working against us. In addition, we're kind of in the middle of nowhere, right? So why us, even if, if uh, aliens could, could travel those large distances? Now, you know, we don't know everything about the laws of physics, and our understanding changes, and we learn new things as we move forward. And so, you know, maybe there is uh, something within the laws of physics that will allow interstellar travel. I'm, I'm skeptical about that, though. It's fascinating, isn't it? So I don't know if you got a chance to watch some of the some of the hearings, and we just showed some of the video on, on the screen there from the U.S. Department of Defense, some aircraft that, that that is unexplained, and they talked about that, and then they went behind closed doors and talked a little bit more. But did you get a chance to see that? What's your take on all of that? So I'm not I'm not an expert on on imagery or or these sorts of things, but what I what I would say is that. You know they're calling these unidentified aerial phenomena now is the new is the new UFO, and I certainly think uh, that well that that many of them may have more mundane explanations, lens effects, you know something uh, that's being mis misunderstood or 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 mistaken for, you know something else. But there's certainly phenomena out there that we have rarely seen and, and we don't have an explanation for. So there can certainly be atmospheric things, other physical phenomena that are, are you know, truly uh, real. Uh, again, are they extraterrestrial intelligence? I, I think not. Although I would hasten to add that I would be the first to, uh, to love to be proven wrong in this. So, Dr. I guess I guess my question, because I, I know that you had said that you think that there, you know, low there was probably a lot of low level life forms, but like the the higher, more intelligent life forms is is less pro is that you you said less probable. I mean, why would that be? I mean, space is so vast. It, it seems like it would be highly probable. I mean, that's just me. That's just me being a dummy. But <laughs> I, I, no, no, that's that's an ex. You're, you're not a dummy, certainly, and and. You know, statistically, yes, we find planets everywhere. Now, you know, are they conducive to life? And, and I should hasten to add that it's life as we know it, right? Because we only have the example of life on Earth. But using that example of life on Earth, you know, we see single-celled life forms, very simple life forms, very early in the history of the Earth. And so that adds, I think, to, 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 to my thinking that because of that, those simple life forms are everywhere. But then you look at, at the example on Earth and intelligent life, us 
for example, or other, other species that, that, that are intelligent, don't come until quite late in the history of the Earth. And so again, mm. statistically, we might expect to see fewer uh, in, of those intelligent uh, species out in interstellar space. In, you know, the it other mean that they don't exist. The, the other day we were talking uh, on, on the couch over here about about movies and TV shows that have you know featured UFOs yeah. or aliens or you know life uh, like you know spaceships coming. What what TV show or movie do you think it represents what it could really actually be like? Star Wars, right? It's definitely <laughs> Star Wars. So, I'm sorry, Star Trek. I'm a Star uh, Trek fan. Trek. So I, so, All right. wow, okay. I, I I can't not say Star Trek, but. Uh, <laughs> You know, and, and, and the actual science that, that is looking, so, so there are uh, uh, projects that are looking for, for intelligent life, Project uh, SETI, the search for extraterrestrial intelligence. And more mundanely, but, but no less important, a lot of our astronomical facilities and observatories are conducting studies of the precursors to life. So looking for molecules that we know are important for life on Earth. And we do that with the radio telescopes like those behind me, the Very Large Array or the ALMA Observatory in Chile, the Green Bank Telescope, uh, finding exoplanets everywhere. And so all of this ac astronomical science is, is building blocks in place to answer these questions. Mm -hmm. And you know, hopefully in, in, the, in the coming decades, we'll have a much stronger idea of what's going on. I always think about, would we actually want there to be intelligent life out there? Because they might not be friendly if they're actually out there. So right. I, I don't know if that's, we want to know that. Well, that's certainly a possibility uh, too, right? I mean, you know, and, and if you say, well, 99.99% of the intelligent species in the galaxy are, are benign, all it takes is one, you know, an advanced species, and, and it, may, it may not be a good day for you but you know that that's a that's a big question and it has to be debated and you know philosophers and scientists and and others can weigh in on this yeah. and and decide whether we want to reach out and try to make contact you know or what happens if we if we do make contact in the future uh, you know how do we proceed and we're obsessed with the debate dr joe pesh we love having you thank you so much Thank you. Thank you for having me. Maybe they do know we're out here and they're like, ah, yeah, I don't, don't want to go there. I don't want to go there. I'm good. <laughs> Thanks, doctor.